The morning after, a deal to pause the assault was seemingly struck, bloodshed and despair yet again in Gaza, with more Israeli airstrikes. My message to Hamas said this man do not commit to a truce. The Israelis, he said, just want to kill. And then, indeed, hours later, an unsettling signal. The planned timing for a swap of Israeli hostages for Palestinians held in Israeli prisons was pushed back for at least a day, now to begin Friday at the earliest. I'm very nervous. It leaves families of the nearly 240 Israelis held in Gaza agonizing even more. I just want to hug my children, to kiss them, to protect them, to promise them that it will never happen again. As it stands, the plan is for a four-day break in the Israeli assault to allow 50 Israeli hostages to be freed in exchange for 150 Palestinian detainees. If it all does go ahead, the hope is that the break could then be extended. The more who are freed, the longer the truce. I think everybody understands exactly what they need to do. Uh, there's a very detailed text of what has to happen once this goes into place. The incentive uh, is for the continuous release of hostages, but that doesn't come uh, for nothing. Uh, if Hamas wants the pause to continue, we need to see more hostages coming out. The deal also includes desperately needed additional aid for displaced Gazans who've lost effectively everything. And it allows for Red Cross officials to visit the remaining hostages. But the looming truce also raises the question, can the war itself be drawn down? Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu still underlining Israel remains committed to destroying Hamas. Hamas, meanwhile, remains unwavering in its commitment to eliminate Israel. As it stands, 1,200 Israelis killed by Hamas October 7th, some 240 abducted. An estimated 14,000 Gazans killed in Israel's retaliation, with nearly 2 million more displaced. As the truce now ticks closer, maybe. Paul Hunter, CBC News, Washington.